What's going on guys? I'm Mike and I'm back with a new video and yes, you are seeing this correctly. Today we're going to be doing our first video on Blender. And if you're like me, stuck in the world of 2D and looking for something new to learn, Blender seems to be a great option. I'll be honest, I'm not really an expert in Blender, so take this as more of an entertainment piece than anything, but I will be walking through the steps to create this partially submerged skull inspired by Westworld and in keeping with the October theme of Halloween. So to start off, we're gonna be using this free skull from free3d.com. And in our project on Patreon, we'll likely replace this skull with a sphere object to prevent any sort of copyright issues there. But the material will be usable for you to import onto your skull when you download the project file. Jumping into Blender, we can delete the starting cube and import the skull. Let's switch to the side profile by using this tool in the upper right scaling it by pressing S on the keyboard and dragging the cursor down. And we could rotate this skull by pressing R and rotating it until he's looking up into the sky. We press G to move the skull, and if we press Z, after we press G, we can constrain the movement to the Z axis, and we can then just drag it up into position. For the water, the water is just a large rectangle, so we can hold Shift, press A to open the object panel, select Mesh and Cube. So our water is essentially a cube object. Just like the skull, we could scale it up. You may need to scale it in the X and Y direction as well. Again, you can constrain the axis you want to move or scale an object by pressing the axis letter. So for scaling in the X only, we'll press S and hit X to scale only in the X direction. So let's now position the camera. Press the camera icon here to pop into the camera view. And in the sidebar, you want to select the option that locks the camera to your view. This way, we can more easily frame the skull where we want it. We may need to scale up the water layer as well, so it fits the full frame. Now would be a good time to change the render engine from Eevee to Cycles and changing the renderer to GPU, so we maximize the performance and speed while getting the best possible render. Also, under the light bounce settings, we could drop this down to one for now, but during the final render, we'll readjust this. Let's now delete the light and add in a new area light. By pressing Shift A, select Light, and then Area Light. We can position it where we would like and change the color and brightness, just like we did with the skull. Again, G to move, S to scale, R to rotate. For this, you're gonna to wanna to jump into the rendered view, and you could toggle the views in the upper right-hand corner. Rendered view is the one on the far right. Now, let's start shading these two objects. At the top, let's toggle into the shading workspace. Think of a workspace like a Photoshop or after effects workspace so we can now select the skull and delete the image texture i'm going for a ceramic or translucent polymer look so let's boost the subsurface up to 0.5 in the principal bsdf and since it's not a metal we'll just leave the metallic at zero we'll boost the roughness to 0.9 and the clear coat up to one with a clear coat roughness of 0.19. This should give us a pretty shiny exterior. However, it still will appear rough on the interior of the skull. I think we're gonna need some more detail here. So let's go and hit Shift A and search for ambient occlusion node. We can drag in and connect the yellow color output to the color input on the principal BSDF shader node. The settings look good, so I don't think we need to adjust anything, but that will give us some more detail around the teeth in particular. Now for the water, we're gonna select the cube and we'll want to add a new texture and we can delete the principal BSDF shader. Now I found this great guide on how to make a nice kind of deep opaque water in Blender. Basically, like Westworld, I wanted the liquid to be fairly light, but deep so the color is strong in, in the shallow areas, it's lighter. Sort of like tea or coffee, in a spoon it looks very clear, but in a cup it looks very dark. Um, I also wanted the liquid to be a little bit more matte in tone or color or reflectivity. Um, something similar to like liquid nylon or, or just nylon in general. Uh, luckily, the creator of this technique made the project file available so we can download this and import it into our project instead of recreating this material from scratch. So back into Blender, we can go to File, Append, and find the downloaded project we can navigate to the material and then select even better water. This will import the material as well as all of the node groups. So now we should be able to hit shift A and search for water and reflections and bring in this water and reflections custom node group into our material. Here we want the water to be deep. So I'm gonna increase this to 30 or 50, somewhere in between that. IOR, we can just adjust to something like 1.4. 
um, or we could likely just leave it alone. And the water blur we want to set to 0.23, so we get a really nice blur of the skull beneath the surface. I don't really want any reflections. Again, I want this to look more like a nylon top as opposed to a very reflective liquid. So we're gonna be bringing that down to 0.017, and then I'm gonna increase the blur to 0.1. So here's where you could start being pretty creative and you could adjust the water color as well as the depth color. Um, additionally, you can move the lights around or um, make them brighter or maybe even add additional lights to get sort of a, a better scene here for your, uh, for your camera view. But um, this is sort of to your taste and the colors obviously will vary. You can also change the world color by going to the world properties panel on the right hand side and changing the color. Maybe you want to make it black so it's completely dark, um, or you want to make it bright, or you want to make it a color itself. But anyways, now we're basically done, and so we can increase the settings for our final output of our render, so that way we get a very um, nice, beautiful render. So again, back to the render settings, we're going to bring the light bounces up to something like four or five, and the sampling up to a thousand. I'm going to be honest, this is not going to be a fast render, but the water is basically creating a sort of like noise trap where light is just continuously bouncing and whenever that happens, it creates a lot of noise. You can use denoising, but in this case, I'm just gonna increase the sample rate. I'm just gonna use a thousand. Um, I noticed that with denoising, we get a lot of smudginess because again, there is just so much noise in the image. And I found that anything less than a thousand is still is providing too much noise for the denoiser to actually do anything with. So now I guess we could just render the image and see how it looks by going to render, render image. And again, this will take quite some time. All right, so the image is done and we can see that it is still quite noisy um, and it might even add a little bit of character. So I think I'm gonna leave it for this case. Anyways, guys, I hope this sparked your curiosity into Blender. And if you wanna download again the project file, you can on our Patreon account. The link is in the description along with the water shader and the skull model links. Anyways, I'd love to see what you make. So be sure to tag us on anything you use this with on Instagram at Mobox Graphics. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.